So let's dig right into WebLogic. If you already know what WebLogic is and how it's positioned within Oracle Scution middleware offerings, then by all means, feel free to skip this course. Otherwise, just hang on for a brief product overview. I'll try not to bore you with minute details, just a brief overview for those that are not familiar with the product. So Oracle WebLogic 12C is one of the leading enterprise application servers on the market today. It serves as the core foundation for most other Oracle middleware offerings, including business process management, data integrator, service bus, SOA suite, B2B, identity management, business intelligence, Hyperion, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, you can go to oracle.com and look under middleware and you will see the slew of products that are built on top of this product. So this is a great course to, to get a, a basic and core understanding of WebLogic that will serve you if you are looking to use any of these other middleware offerings from Oracle. So what makes Oracle WebLogic truly versatile is that it can be deployed and scaled across multiple environments, uh, including cloud, traditional on-prem systems, supporting mobile clients, and it can be deployed to Oracle's engineered systems such as Exalogic or Exalytics for building out a platform or infrastructure as a service. And let's not forget about our developers and our administrators. WebLogic 12C offers a rich tooling and feature set for devs and admins alike. So for developers, WebLogic offers a deep feature set for development. Uh, it supports the full Java EE6 and 7 specifications. It integrates with Oracle's Java Cloud Service. It supports Web 2.0 technologies, including HTML5, REST out of the box, WebSockets. WebLogic has built in support for JDeveloper, NetBeans, and Eclipse. It also supports Java SC7 and SC8. And it can be run on Windows, Linux, and even your Mac. And for Spring developers out there, there's full Spring 3.x support as well. From a DevOps perspective, WebLogic has full support for Maven, and it can integrate with Hudson, Jenkins, Docker, or Killian, and Ant for deployment. So for administrators out there, 12C was re-architected with the cloud in mind, and that's where the C in 12C comes from. 12C has all the tooling necessary to support cloud scale management, including dynamic clusters, which allows WebLogic to elastically grow uh, depending on your requirements. The 12C release of WebLogic brought significant changes to the product. It has been completely re-architected with infrastructure and platform as a service in mind. It has built-in support for multi-tenancy and cloud-scale operations from provisioning, deployment, to monitoring, and patching. And it achieves all this through the built-in cloud-scale management support, including the REST management APIs, Fusion Middleware Control, and Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. When you go to license WebLogic, it comes in three different editions. There's standard, which is suitable for most small deployments. Uh, then there's enterprise edition, which includes high availability and fault tolerance, which is more suitable for a, a large scale or a larger scale production environment. And then there's WebLogic Suite Edition, which includes all the feature sets, specifically Coherence Enterprise Edition and Active Grid Link for Rack. So there are just too many features to go over in this lecture without boring you further. Keep in mind that the focus of this course is to introduce you to WebLogic. Don't worry, there will be other courses on advanced topics in the near future. If you have an idea for a course or topic, please contact me directly. Stay tuned. The next lecture on understanding WebLogic concepts will go over WebLogic domains, servers, and resources.